Special funding for the operation of this channel is provided by the City of Oceanside. The content of program and opinions expressed in PEG Access programs are the sole responsibility of the program producers. Hi, welcome to this edition of North County Talks. I'm your host, John Bonasaro. Joining us today is Wayne Knight, Senior Vice President of Medical Services at Tri-City Medical Center, who will update us on some important details regarding those who are eligible for Medicare. It's a complicated subject, and there's a lot of information to get across, so let's get right to it. Wayne, thanks for joining us on the show. It's my pleasure, John. Thank you for having me. Well, let's get right down to it. Um, what are a person's Medicare choices? Well, for people who are eligible for Medicare, there's really two paths you can take. One is traditional Medicare, which is um, the uh, program that's been in place in this country since the mid-1960s. Uh, it's where you have Part A and Part B, and you also can purchase Medigap coverage for the uh, co-pays, and then there's a prescription drug option that you can also acquire. The second path is to go by uh, the managed care program that Medicare offers. And uh, this is through um, one of several health plans that choose to offer that in the community that we live in. Are those two plans what you would face virtually anywhere, or does it depend on the state or locality? Uh, virtually anywhere in this country. Um, there are Medicare Advantage plans, which is the, um, the managed care program, and they're available in I think all 50 states in this country. Uh, in places locally, like uh, here, like us here in Oceanside, there are 11 to 12 uh, plans that are providing coverage this year. In some other states, you have one or two players. But every state has an option between the traditional and the Medicare Advantage plans. Okay. So the number of plans could vary, but those basic choices remain the same? That's correct. I'm asking the question because there's a, a, our population is pretty transitory now. So I'm sure we have people viewing the show who this is their first open enrollment opportunity since moving in. So they don't have to relearn the, the whole system. No, if, if you know the rules in North Carolina or New York, there's the same rules that apply here in California. Okay. And speaking of uh, enrollment, when can you join uh, Medicare or a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, um, the first option you have to join Medicare is this seven-month window between the three months before you turn 65, the month you turn 65, and the three months afterwards. That is a traditional opt-in time to uh, become a Medicare participant. If you want to choose a managed care plan and you're already Medicare eligible, there is a second option, which is the open enrollment period, which we are fast approaching. The open enrollment period in 2015 is October 15th through December 7th. That's the time that Medicare beneficiaries can add, drop, or change their coverage. There's a um, third period, which you were alluding to earlier, called the special election period. And that would apply to people uh, that, say, moved to a different location or they had employer-provided uh, uh, retirement plan insurance and those plans changed or the location changed. Then you can opt in during that special uh, election period. Is there a disenrollment period? Uh, there actually is a disenrollment period. It runs from January 1st until um, February 14th, and that is the opportunity if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan, you can drop that plan and go back to traditional Medicare. Is there any mechanism in place that keeps people notified of this, or do they need to access the information through a show like this or through a website and remember it? Well, if you currently have a Medicare Advantage plan, your plan must have notified you by just September 30th uh, of 2014 of any changes to your plan, any drops in coverage, or any change in the benefits. So if you're already enrolled in the program, your plan is responsible for notifying you of what's new and different for 2015. If you're new to the program, then um, if you're new to the Medicare Advantage or Medicare programs, uh, choices like this uh, would be helpful to have um, working with an insurance broker, or even contacting Medicare directly are all sources of information. Okay, so you will not receive an initial notice? Uh, not for the Medicare Advantage plans that we're okay. talking about here. So what exactly is open enrollment? 
Well, it's the time of year that uh, the federal government sets aside for Medicare beneficiaries who are already in a Medicare Advantage plan to review their choices and to make decisions as to whether or not they want to change the plan. Now, it's very important because health plans change their network of physicians. They can uh, increase or decrease copays. Uh, they can change their Part D prescription benefit plans. I saw an interesting uh, uh, presentation on CNN that said over 90% of the people that are actually in a Medicare Advantage plan, once they're in, they never want to look at the paperwork again. They just keep renewing with the same plan. And in fact, the plans change every year. So open enrollment is the time to very carefully study your plan benefits and other options that are available to you and decide if you want to keep that plan or see if there's other plans that you may want to go to. So the plan doesn't actually change during the year, but during the year you'd get notified of what the changes would be in the following year. Right. The plans can only change the benefit once a year and it's done on the calendar year. And you can only change plans once a year other than some special circumstances. That's correct. What do you actually do once the period starts? I mean, presumably you've done some of this review beforehand if you get notified in advance. What activities should you be undertaking during the open enrollment period? Well, if you made a choice of what plan you'd like to be with, then you can contact that health plan and you can ask for their enrollment forms. You can also discuss your options with Medicare and they have a 800 number you can call. Um, there are organizations that, uh, such as uh, Tri-City Medical Center that run open enrollment forums where they have all of the plans at the table and you can come to the forum, visit and talk to representatives from the different plans and discuss your options and what they're providing. Do you recommend a, uh, a full review every enrollment period? John, I absolutely would recommend that because as we've seen in the news this year, there are networks of physicians in each of the plans and not every physician is in every plan. So if you have a primary care physician or a specialty care physician that you have worked with and want to continue to be able to access, you need to make sure that they'll be in the plan that you choose in uh, 2015. Are doctors limited to one change per year or is there a longer period? Are they free to, are providers free to, to move? Providers well? can move with the proper notice to the plan, but their physicians that participate in any of these manic, uh, Medicare Advantage plans uh, with the 90 day notice can opt out of that. Can you switch plans more than once during open enrollment? Uh, you can switch plans as often as you'd like during the open enrollment period, but your last choice on December 7th when open enrollment closes will be the choice that you are um, affiliated with for the rest of the upcoming year. Now that switching more than once wouldn't be the norm, right? I mean, you shouldn't plan on doing that. You should do your research and pick one. I would highly recommend that. Um, after doing the research uh, and you have a plan you're comfortable with and that your physicians are participating in, um, and it has the benefits you like, I would choose that plan and I would stick with it. Now, we're, we're going to talk about what some of the names of the plans are, but there's about a dozen plans available to San Diego residents. Is it wise to take a look at all 12, particularly during the first time around? Um, it absolutely is because um, all 12 of them can offer different combinations, and so. If, if you are someone that uh, has a lot of prescription medicines, then you would want to look at the plans, what we call the Part D benefit. And if you are someone that utilizes a lot of specialty care, then you're going to want to study their networks. For instance, a, a physician that's in, uh, let's say, Blue Shield uh, Medicare Advantage plan um, would not be in a Kaiser plan. And a physician that's in a, a United Healthcare plan may or may not be in a Blue Cross plan. So again, uh, each plan has different networks and it's important to study those networks and to study those benefits. I, I don't want to overemphasize first timers, but I think that that's probably the number one target market for what we're talking about here because they have no experience in it. Um, I, I'd like to get your sense of um, just how deeply you need to go into this to get quality information. I, I'm guessing that they don't come with labels, or maybe they do, and I'm, I'm looking forward to your answer, that say, you know, we're the one for people 
who spend a lot on prescriptions or we're the one for people who do this. How deeply do you need to dive into the fine print, which can get pretty fine, right, uh, to, to make a determination on what's going to work for you? It certainly can get very fine. And so again, I would uh, take control of my own health care needs and I would know what my priorities are and I would ask the, the health plan that I'm talking to, what are your prescription benefits or can I see a list of who, what physicians are in your network? It is really um, important for the patient to be well informed when they make these decisions because nothing is more important than your health care and you need to be comfortable that you've done your research and not be afraid to ask questions because the plans, the providers, they're all used to these kind of questions and they all know the answers or they should know the answers. And if you don't get an answer you like or you don't feel comfortable, uh, you should explore other options. Can you give me an estimate on how much time you think, and I know there's no perfect amount, but what's your estimate on how much time this usually takes, this research? Well, if a patient um, knows their own needs at this point in time, you, most people would be uh, pretty comfortable with, you know, I'm going to have an orthopedic issue coming up or I'm, um, I'm very concerned about if my cardiologist is, is in a plan or not in a plan or, you know, I have diabetes and I take a lot of different medications for that. Once you know what, you're, what is important to you, um, you can do this research in two or three hours. And again, the more questions you ask, the easier the job is to make the decision. But um, it's fairly simple once you know the questions to ask. And the questions should be per pertinent to you. What's important to you, that's the questions you should ask. Uh, what, what are the, the big names here in San Diego that people should look for in terms of the plans that are available? Well, in San Diego, there is uh, Blue Cross offers a plan, Blue Shield, HealthNet, United Healthcare. SCAN has a plan, Humana, Care First, and Kaiser, and uh, uh, two or three others. Those are the biggest players in our, um, in our part of the county. So no matter how big the brand name is, um, and no matter how um, bland or generic it might appear, um, I'm hearing you say that there's a degree of customization, that's re which surprises me, to tell you the truth, that there's a degree of customization that's really worth digging into. Yeah, um, let me give an example. Some plans have zero copays. They may have a narrow network of physicians, but when you go to the physician, you don't have to pay a copay. That's important for some people because the uh, multiple $20, $25 copays can be very expensive. So if you are uh, focused on the expense of actually visiting a physician, you would, you would find favor with a plan that has no copays. Other plans have higher copays, but they have wider physician choices. So. It's, uh, it's all a matter of what's important to you and what your priorities are. So you're balancing categories of distance traveled, personal preference on a physician, and, and then ultimately costs, how much it's going to cost you out of pocket. That's correct. That's correct. All those are important priorities, especially if your transportation options are limited. Then you want to have somebody close to your home, close to your neighborhood. Um, if you are in a tight budget, then you are going to focus on co-pays and deductibles and things of like that. And again, not every plan offers the same network or the same type of copays. We're, we're getting close to our break, and when we come back, we'll talk about what Tri City Medical Center does to support this period. Um, I want to throw one last question at you. How standardized is the presentation that these providers give? Do they answer the same range of questions in the same way? Well, now that's an interesting question because by law, each plan must identify certain categories of benefits they have. And so they have to disclose their copays, they have to disclose their net worth, they have to disclose um, their um, uh, benefits and their Part D prescriptions. So the government regulates the type of product that's offered, but within each category, there are ranges that plans can offer. I, my experience with plans is that they're very upfront and very open with their disclosure. And um, especially if you're working with the broker, um, the information is very reliable. We'll talk about the broker issue when we come back. What I'm understanding is there's a range of goal, there's goalposts in effect that they're all Absolutely. in, not just in terms of what they provide, but how they explain it. That is correct. Thank you. We will be back. We're going to take a short break and we will dig in uh, to this important subject further. Stay with us.
The sooner you quit smoking, the sooner you'll start reducing your risk. You have a job, you go to school, but you're sick. You feel awful, but you go anyway. Well, did you know your flu germs can easily spread to others? It's the gift nobody wants. If we're talking H1N1 swine flu or seasonal flu, if you're sick, stay home. Get plenty of rest and fluids. Go to the County of San Diego's website, sdcounty.ca.gov for more information or call 211. Welcome back to this edition of North County Talks. We're back with Wayne Knight, Senior Vice President of Medical Services at Tri-City Medical Center to talk to you about your Medicare options. Uh, Wayne, when we broke away, um, you brought up a term, well, no pun, no pun intended, of, uh, of broker. So do brokers have a role in this choice? Uh, brokers absolutely do have a role in the Medicare program uh, and in the Medicare Advantage program. Um, independent uh, health insurance brokers can uh, talk to you about any and all the uh, plans that work in this area and that offer the Medicare Advantage plan. Also, each of the plans themselves will have brokers that can talk about their specific plan. So the role of a broker is, is, can be very important in this process. Would the brokers who represent one of the providers be exclusive? Would a Blue Shield, someone talking about Blue Shield, does that mean that's all they re represent? Yeah, if you are meeting with the Blue Shield representative, they're going to talk about their benefits and what they offer. Um, Medicare strongly discourages individual plans from making comparisons to other plans. So they will talk to you about their plan, and if you want to ask a question about another plan, they will direct you to that plan. Okay. So is, is it pretty easy to tell when you're dealing with an independent broker? You know, they would have a tag that says Blue Shield <laughs> Broker right there, so yes. Okay. And, and if you see that and someone's with a, a private company, then you would know you're dealing with a private broker. Okay. So what, what is Tri-City Medical Center doing to support the open enrollment this year? Well, this year, like uh, previous years, um, we are sponsoring several enrollment educational meetings. Uh, this year, they'll occur between October 17th and December 3rd. Uh, the meetings are in the afternoon, in the morning, in the weekends, different times to uh, make it available to all the people in the community. And they're both at the hospital and at the wellness center in Carlsbad. Is there a number that people can call to get information on it? Yes, people can call toll-free at 855-222-8262. They can also go on the web and visit Tri-City at tricitymed, that's all one word, dot org, tricitymed.org. Are any uh, reservations or appointments required or recommended? It's recommended, but it absolutely is not required. Okay. And what can people expect to see when they show up? They will see representatives from the major health plans that are offering uh, Medicare Advantage plans in our market. They'll also see representatives from some of the organized medical groups, uh, the IPAs. And there may be one or two physicians there also being able to ask questions about general health needs. Let me ask a couple sort of housekeeping items. Um, is, are, are all of the uh, events of equal quality, let's call it, where the same people are at all of them. So people, sh can they schedule it for their own convenience, or are there a couple main ones that people should really try to get to? Um, each of the um, opportunities would be presented in the same format. So if you can't make one and you can make another one, you're not missing out on anything. Okay. Now, I know you stressed this before, but I think you feel that, I, and I agree, this is really important. There's some stuff you should bring, correct? You should bring uh, information that you might need on what type of prescriptions you're on. You should have a list of the doctors that you want to be able to access, be they in primary care or specialty care, to be able to say, is my favorite cardiologist in your network? Um, and just generally know about your expenses and know about how you access health care. Uh, also, if you have a particular hospital that you are uh, want to work with and want to be able to access care at, make sure that in addition to the physician that the hospital is in the network. And so those could be two different things, I just realized. So uh, do you recommend that people do some research before showing up, or are these events the perfect place to do your initial research and then follow up later, either online or with specific interviews with um, providers? 
Well, the events are set up so that an individual can walk in there if they chose and say, I know nothing about open enrollment. I need to be educated. Tell me what, what there is to learn. So um, on the other hand, if someone says, if someone approaches it like, well, I've done this two or three years in a row, but I want to explore making some changes this year, we're also able to address those levels. So it's, it's really a balanced uh, presentation. Depending on what your needs are, they can be addressed at these meetings. So it's set up for either situation then, right? So you, you could start up from ground zero or you could get the, the graduate level of how these things work. It's designed for all, uh, it's designed for everyone in the community and whatever their needs might be. Now this next question, I, I have to let, as a former Marine, I have to let viewers know, I know what an IPA is, but I don't think we're talking about the same IPA because I don't think we're going to change the conversation to beer right now. So <laughs> tell us what your version of an IPA is. Uh, my version of IPA is not a, uh, a beer. Okay. It is an independent practice association. In these cases, these are groups of physicians that have come together to negotiate with the various health plans that offer managed care, Medicare, and to be in their network. So in, in our area that we work in, uh, there's uh, two or three IPAs that work there. Uh, we have Primary Care Associates Medical Group, Greater Tri-City IPA, and then also the Scripps system. I have to ask, how does this fit in with the what doctors are members of and what hospitals may or may not be members of? Um, they're two separate networks, but generally a physician will only join a Medicare Advantage plan, say through an IPA, that includes the hospital that they currently work with. So someone that works and practices in Oceanside, say for example, is going to want to be a member of a plan that Tri-City Medical Center works in, just like someone that works or practices in, in Escondido would want to be in a network that, say, Palomar Health is part of. Are IPAs represented at your events? Yes, they are. There'll be representatives from all the IPAs in our community at these events. Is there an order in which, and, and I guess the answer might be this is completely individual, but in general, is there an order that people should make their decision you know, the, the players on the table are physicians and physicians groups and IPAs and the hospital. Is there an, a normal order? You know, again, this is one of the advantages of, pardon the pun, Medicare Advantage, is that you can customize and make decisions on what's important to you. Again, if, if you are someone that accesses specialty care more than primary care, then you can choose a plan that you've verified your specialist is in. If you're new to the community and need a primary care physician, you can find the plans that offer the biggest choice of primary care physicians. And if you or a loved one uh, anticipate having hospital needs in the upcoming year, then again, you can focus on the hospital network. So it's, it's entirely up to the patient, and, and that's one of the most important points here, is that this is patient choice, and it's patient-centered, and uh, the information is there for the patients to make a decision. One of the things we mentioned earlier, we're going to dig into a little bit now because while it's not the norm, it's a little bit complicated. And those are the special election periods. So uh, let's start off with if someone misses an open enrollment and still wants to make a change, what are the various options? Um, there are certain exceptions to open enrollment, and they depend in part on changes to your personal circumstances. So if there is a major change in your um, uh, financial circumstances, if you've moved, if you've lost coverage, um, anybody that falls in those categories uh, has an expanded time to um, work with the Medicare Advantage plans or to uh, cycle back to traditional Medicare. By the way, is this something you could get information on at, uh, at your event as well? You can get information on our event. You can also get information from Medicare itself and uh, it's, it's readily out there. And this particular topic is completely independent of the physician, the hospital, the IPA, or anything else, right? This is generic to Medicare itself. That's correct, John. This is something that Medicare, there's rules that Medicare establishes. Uh, there's a thing called the plan non-renewal special election period? That's correct. Um, if you're in a plan now, and the plan has made a decision to drop out of the Medicare Advantage market, 
uh, they are required by law to have uh, notified you by September 30th of the fact that they'll be withdrawing at the end of the year and provide you information on how to contact Medicare for further questions and notify you of other plans in the area that are providing that service. The window for those people uh, begins earlier to make decisions. I think we already covered the uh, special election period for low income. Okay. Uh, five star Medicare Advantage or Part D plan special election period. For certain plans, and there are very, very few of them, that have earned a five star rating for Medicare, which is the quality indicators um, that Medicare measures through both uh, outcome measurements and patient satisfaction. The plans that are rated five star, they can actually uh, make their product available to uh, Medicare beneficiaries 12 months out of the year. Let's sort of bring things up to date. Are, are there any changes to Medicare this year that we need to talk about? Well, in uh, 2014 and going into 2015, Medicare is as strong as it's ever been. It is uh, well-funded. The uh, benefit levels are the highest they've been. Uh, last year when the Affordable Care Act uh, went online, it expanded uh, um, access to uh, certain cancer screenings and to uh, patient well-being and to annual physicals. These things are, uh, were last year new to the plan, but they're continuing this year. So um, the best benefits uh, that have ever been available through Medicare are available here and now. Speaking of here and now, the news is dominated by the health insurance exchanges, what commonly called Obamacare. How does that fit into this, if at all? Well, that's an interesting question, and I get that uh, fairly often. If you are eligible for Medicare, the simple answer is that you are not eligible for the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare or any of the exchanges. Uh, the health insurance exchanges, and in this state it's called Covered California, were designed for people that do not have health insurance or that um, are working or um, uh, not eligible for Medicare. If you are eligible for Medicare, by definition you have health insurance and that health insurance will be Medicare. Interestingly enough, it's technically illegal for a broker or a plan or anyone to try and sell you any of the covered California Obamacare products if you are eligible for Medicare. So my simple answer to people is, if you're eligible for Medicare, you're not eligible for the health insurance exchange. It's that simple. So if uh, somebody who's eligible gets someone approach them, uh, that's a problem and they shouldn't be responding. They should not be responding and they don't even need to have that conversation. Okay. We've got about a minute left. Is there any additional bits of wisdom you want to impart? What I always encourage people to remember is that your window for making changes is, runs between October 15th and December 7th. After that, the window closes. Plans change their benefits every year. So even if you've really enjoyed your plan in the uh, previous year, it's important to uh, research any changes they might be making. And if you don't like the changes or you want to explore options, this is the time to reach out to other uh, Medicare Advantage plans and see if there's something better for you. Wayne, uh, thanks for getting a lot of information out accurately and concisely. John, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching North County Talks. Remember, you can watch this show and any other KOCT program at KOCT.org. You can also share this important program with family and friends online. Be an informed citizen. See you next time.